Right. All right. <clears throat> now we're learning the Devar Malchut. The Devar Malchut is talking about God taking Moses into Paro, which is the title of this week's Torah portion, Bo El Paro. And the Rebbe explains that what God did was take Moshe into a tremendously high <clears throat> level of revelation of godliness. Paro means to be revealed. <clears throat> it also means wild. And it was so tremendously powerful and alive that Moshe was afraid to go. <clears throat> Too unlimited. So therefore God went with him. <clears throat> and by means of this, by going into this level, as he first of all met the source of all being, including the source of all evil, and even more that he was able to embody this even as a human being, as Moshe. <clears throat> and that's one of the reasons why it says that Moshe was couldn't speak. It was hard for him to speak because it was so high, he couldn't express this from the revelation that he got from Paro. But this was the beginning of the ability of human beings to receive from the essence of God. That's Mount Sinai. What happened on Mount Sinai was that God revealed himself to human beings, three million people. They all heard, felt, saw God. And in details, they heard commandments coming from God. They felt and saw the source of all being, including the source of all evil. And this was brought to them by Moses. Moses went up on Mount Sinai, and he was the one who brought this revelation. The first two commandments, the Jews heard themselves. They said they couldn't take it. But the idea of Mashiach is that we will be able to take it. So now we can understand, I'll piece that, we can understand Gamkin also, Madua, why Boal Paro coming to Paro is a preparation for the beginning of the redemption. Mm -hmm. All right, one minute. Okay. Of the Gaula, Nosov, in addition to the explanation, what we said that by means of Boal Paro coming to Paro, the bad side, there was, it broke all the clipper of Paro. It broke the Paro, the power of Paro. Moses going into Paro broke his power, Kafishu Betopo, as he was in his palace. Shazui, this is the beginning of the redemption. That's the getting rid of bad. But there is even more and more important thing, namely, the completion, the idea of leaving Egypt was not just getting out of bad. It was not running from, even though that was very important. But the main thing of the redemption was running to. Shlemus of the whole completion of going out of Egypt is to go to the giving of the Torah. And when the Torah was given, now we know how to express our love and connection to God how to bring ourselves closer and the whole world closer. That's the korban we said before, the sacrifice. In Hebrew, it means korban to come close. How to make ourselves and the whole world close to God. But even more, when we do the Torah, we know whose Torah it is. It is not just a book that was given thousands of years ago and maybe it got lost and maybe it got changed and maybe it got you know, altered and maybe we didn't understand it properly or maybe this. That's all lies. The Torah was given by God to the Jewish people with all of its explanations. And it's never changed since then. There are certain things that God gave, and he said that we have to figure out ourselves the explanations to come to this truth. But there is truth. doesn't mean that the truth comes from us. Moses, when they say that Moses gave the Torah, means Moses gave the truth. It became revealed. To, to, and that was the accomplishment of Moses when he went 
and to Paro that every single Jew could receive the Torah and receive the truth to feel that it is God that is giving the Torah. Even now when we learn it, the essence of God, we can feel now when we learn the Torah because God took Moses into Paro. Then we can fulfill. So going out of Egypt was only half of the picture, leaving bad, but going to good. So the fact that Moses went into power, that gives us the power now that we can go out of our own selfishness and our own ignorance. That's one part, going out, but going to. <clears throat> we can go to, every time we learn the Torah, we can connect to the Creator. Gilo Atmos, the revelation of Atmos, the essence of God below, to the Jewish people, Neshamos Begufim, souls and bodies. Neshama Bria, a healthy soul, in a healthy body. Ah, Menachem, that's for you. Ki yudu, like it's known, Shabbat Matan Torah, that in Matan Torah's Hitrapu were healed all of the Jews. Kolel, including Moshe. Like we said before, Moshe was had a speech impediment. He got healed. We can say, Shazem Rumaz, this is also hinted, what God said to Moshe, to the Jewish people before Matan Torah, Va'atem tiyuli mamlechet koanim. You will be for me a nation of priests, the Goy Kadosh, and a holy nation, right before the giving of the Torah. Shagam, Lefkefisheim, just as they are Goy, just as the Jewish people are a nation, a regular nation. But Olamazen, in this world, the Gashmi physical world, nevertheless, they will be Goy Kadosh, they will be a holy nation. They don't have to go to heaven in order to do it. Him Kadosh, this picture all of a sudden got, uh, whatever is it? Uh, spiritified, spiritified. Him Kadosh, they are holy. They are a mamlechet koanim. They are a nation of priests. Koanim gedolim. Not only priests, but they're high priests. Koanim gadol tzorech liot shalem, a holy, a high priest goes into the Holy of Holies. Every Jew is going to be in the Holy of Holies. What, by the way, was in the Holy of Holies? The Torah. The Torah was in the Holy of Holies. Every Jew received the Torah. Every Jew nowadays, when we learn the Torah, you can be in the Holy of Holies. What is like that? Like a high priest. The high priest had to be complete. He had to be healthy. In his body, his mom, money says he had to be rich. If he wasn't rich, they made him rich. Why did he have to be rich? Because people don't listen to a poor person. They don't respect them. That's the nature of man. Huh? <clears throat> his garments, his garments have to be for beauty. Have to be beautiful. Shekafisha ben Israel, like just as the Jewish people are found, souls and bodies, they are all one with God. Al Derechzeh similarly is drawn down also not just into the Jewish people, but into the world. Chibur, the Elyonim, the joining of the upper worlds with the lower worlds. Shinif Al, this was brought about when the Torah was given. It says when the Torah was given, that God's voice it had no echo. It didn't bounce off of anything. It permeated everything, including all time. So it went into every human being for all time. It permeated. Atzmos, the essence of God will be revealed in this physical world. That's what Mashiach will do. He's just revealed what already happened in Mount Sinai. That godliness and God's will is <clears throat> everywhere. But people cover it over with all sorts of religions and things. And because because this is a big novelty. What, what's the novelty? That a human being, a neshama begufa, a soul and a body, that is limited, can be united with the infinite, with essence of God. Kefisha, Moshe, like Moshe, he'd pale. That's why, that's why Moses was afraid to go in to Paro. Dachilmineh. Because we're saying the good connotation of Paro was that it is a tremendously high revelation of God, and Moshe was afraid. Lochin, therefore, in order to prepare Moshe to go into Paro, by Yomer Hashem on Moshe, God said to Paro, God said to Moshe, God said to Moshe, Boel Paro, come with me to Paro. That's the that's the whole title of this week's Torah portion. God said, Listen, Moshe, I understand you're afraid to go into such high revelations. It's understandable. I'll take you in. That you, being a human being, a soul in a body, Moshe, like it says, Moshe, God spoke to Moshe, like he is in the physical world, but there could be a danger, 
because of paro, of the bad side of paro, ezun nichnas lepinimut, he went into the inside of paro, of holiness, umakavla the giluim, and he received the revelations, hachi nailim, the highest revelations from the essence of God. She as pariu vizgalim minei, that there is revealed from him all of the lights. How you days that by means of this, shechein hoya yitzel Moshe, that it was by, that this is what happened to Moshe, that Moshe, a human being, can receive this highest revelations of godliness, something like what it was in the holy temple, the holy of holies. What was the holy of holies? Pure godliness, the same revelations of Mount Sinai, but it was there constantly. But you couldn't go in. No one could go in. Even the high priest, the holiest person in Israel, if he went in on the wrong day, or even if he went on the right day, on Yom Kippur, and he thought the wrong thought, he went in, he would die. It was just too much good, too much revelation. But Moshe became an example that what was in the Holy Temple can be in every single Jew. And eventually in every single human being and every single in the whole world revealed creator. From this is drawn down the power to all the Jewish people <coughs> that they'll be able the kabel to receive this revelation of the giving of the Torah. Uh, when it was actually accomplished, this joining of limitation with unlimitation. As Perio there is revealed, opened up all of the lights will come down to be near mitzvah the Torah or that the commandments become like a lamp and the Torah becomes a light. All of the lights were revealed in Ba'ovin is Priyo, in a revealed way without any limit. Can you do it like it's known? That the Torah and the commandments on themselves, hein be'etzim, they are essentially lamaila above medita v'hagbala. They're above any limitation. Why? Because the Torah and the commandments are very deceptive. They look like they're things in the world. Like, how do you say, religious objects, artifacts, what do they call it? It looks like the regular thing. You can go into a store and you can buy it. You can buy tefillin, you can buy, but there's pure godliness. You can, I can buy godliness. That doesn't make any sense. It says, <clears throat> okay, let's, we'll talk about that in a second. But the fact of the matter is, is the Torah, learning the commandments and, the, and learning the Torah and doing the commandments are totally above any limitation because it's the will and the, the wisdom and the will of God. The Hakirush, the novelty is not just the, the, that we can get the Torah and the commandments as they are. Let's say when you go to heaven, Elagam Kafishi and Yordin Lamata, also how they came down below. And Matan Torah, the Medita Vagbala in limitation, the Kiyum of Shlemosam, Talui, this depends in our limitation to do what God wants, the essence of God, the only way it can be expressed in the essence of God. We're not talking about spiritual levels. Spiritual levels, you got to go up to heaven, you got to go up there, you have to be a holy person. But the essence of God can only be expressed by physical commandments in this physical world. The angels go berserk every time a Jew does a commandment. Because they're only spiritual. And the commandments are essence. And God made it that the only way, only way this essence can be revealed is through the actual physical commandments. If so we see that the limitation and the measure of them is if the commandments can actually connect to the essence of God. So we see that the limited commandments are not really so limited. Whether we're talking about Torah, the Torah, the written Torah, or which is, it seems to have a limitation, has to be very exact. There has to be an exact number of letters or even in the oral Torah, the Talmud, etc., the laws, that learning it has to be, has to be, in my personal understanding, and my grasping of a human being. So maybe you might say, oh, here, this is not so holy. The written Torah, that's holy. We can understand these are the words of the Lord. But here, this is just the words of Rabbi Akiva and Beit Rish Lokish and, and Hillel and Shammai. That, that, that's not God speaking. Right? These are these people speaking. He says, listen, Rabbi says, I'll tell you even more, something even more. When you learn this, you're supposed to put it into your mind. Not Rabbi Akiva, not Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Ahil of Hashemai. It has to be put into your mind. In Joe's mind, in Sam's mind, whoever your name is, it has to be in your mind. That's really not godly, right? Yeah, this is wrong. That what the, the ideas that are coming from Rabbi Akiva and from Hillel and from Shammai and that are in your mind, they're in your mind, 
and it seems to be that within the limits of understanding. <clears throat> Only when you understand it can you really make the blessings on the Torah. Nevertheless, in the commandments, in all of the commandments that they have limitation, Hari Medir of this limitation itself reveals the essence of God, Kal Nahorim, like when Moshe, that's what Moshe accomplished when he went into Paro. That from then on, the essence of God, Paro in its essence source, is this high, tremendous level, near midst of the Torah or can be in a way that as pariu lamayla minavidavagbala that can be revealed above limitation in limitation. Like it says, the Jewish people will be a number that you won't be able to count them because there's such a great number. It says that does that God says to uh, to Abraham was it the number of the Jews will so be so many that you won't be able to count them because they're uncountable. So what, how do you say the number? Just say they're uncountable. So they're linking together with number and above number. All there, like it says, that was like the classic example. The ark, which was in the Holy of Holies that held the Torah, had to be exact measurements. It was two and a half amas long, and amas like about a foot and a half, two and a half amas long, right? Two and a half wide, wide. And what is it? One arm high, I have to look and see, one arm high and one arm deep. It had to be exact. If it wasn't exact, it was disqualified. So it had to take up, nevertheless, when they measured, they would lower someone down from the, there was a hole in the ceiling to clean out the place, make it clean. His feet wouldn't touch the ground, but he could see, right, when he would measure to see that the ark was in exactly the right place, he would measure from one end of the ark to the wall, <clears throat> and the other end of the ark to the wall, and it was exactly 10 amas from one end to the wall, and 10 amas at the other end of the ark to the wall. The only problem was is that the room, it should have been 20, two and a half amas wide, 10 amas here, 10 amas here, and two and a half in the middle, but it wasn't, it was 20 amas. So the ark didn't take up any place, but it had to be exact measurements, or it was no good. So it had to, had to take up a place. But the fact is, it didn't take a place. So that says the place of the ark. There was a place, but it could not be measured. And it didn't. It didn't. Didn't take up any space. <clears throat> That's so. It is with all the commandments. From and how? Why? Because Moses went into Paro, and Paro is this aspect of God that's above any limitation, and he brought it into the world. Now this makes absolutely no sense, <clears throat> but it's real. It's true. And just so you know, you say, oh, listen, so, you know, I don't want anything to do, this, to do with this. But the fact is, is that really, nothing really makes any sense. The scientists have no idea what matter is, what consciousness is, what energy is. They just know there is such a thing. <clears throat> they know how it works. They know in certain ways they can produce it. Or they can transform energy into mass and mass into energy. We don't know what life is. Everyone is alive and you don't know what it is. Right? How does it work? How <clears throat> consciousness? What are the, these are these are miracles, and these are low. These are just physical things. So it's not how do you say um, <clears throat> unusual to deal with things which are not understandable. It's not ruled out. When we say from this, long then we can learn from the service of every Jew that receives the Torah and the commandments. Shagam kafishahu nim so that a Jew, even as he is physically in a physical body below, in kolamadidot vagbalos, with all of his limitations and boundaries, so rechu liot boofen the lamaila me abididot vagbala, a Jew has to be above limitation, and that's what we were just talking about in the Maimer before. You have to be crazy. He has to be not crazy, not a normal crazy, a normal crazy person. He does things that a normal crazy person does. You have to be crazy with God, on God's standards. That's truly crazy. That's truly crazy. That's a productive and a positive craziness that only comes to build, only comes to help, only comes to bring blessing and <clears throat> good in the world. That's crazy. Not to be selfish. That's, that's not normal. When you do a, a Jew does Torah and commandments, you have to realize you're connecting yourself to this low rock and not just your soul, 
the soul that God gave me, Lamaila, which is above any limit of the body, but even as it is below in a body, in limited <coughs> the deed of Hagbala, excuse me, <coughs> in a physical body. We're just like the ark in the Holy of Holies. Because Moses accomplished this by meeting with Paro, by going to the essence source of Paro. A human being. <coughs> it says that God keeps the soul in the body. Even there, there can be Boral Paro. Even when the soul is in the body, nevertheless, we can come to this level of Boal Paro, is Pariu, to this level of godliness, which is revealed all of the lights. <coughs> he receives all the lights and even more that his limited body and his body, body and his limited world. Just one second. I have, <coughs> itself is in a way of is totally above any limitation. But Tom, and the reason for this is how can we do this? How is this possible? What is the Rebbe saying here? That we can attach ourselves with the essence of God. Like Moses did. <clears throat> so the reason is, is that we're we're already attached. We're already that we're just revealing something. Like I said, you know, Columbus did not dis, the he that didn't invent America. He discovered it. It was already there. It was very difficult. He had to go across the sea. He had to this the same thing with us. We don't have to invent in this godliness. All we have to do is reveal it. It's already there. The Jewish people and God are totally one. That's why we're called the sons of God. Not only because of their soul or a part of their soul. The whole existence of a Jew. That what we say that we're the sons of God, that's only regarding to the soul. Here the Rebbe is saying this is something higher. <coughs> The whole very existence of a Jew, the Jewish body, that's the whole secret of the raising of the dead. A soul in a body together is kulachat, it's all one with God, so to speak. An essence. If you grab a little bit of it, you grab the whole thing. So therefore, if you take any part of a Jew, a Jew is a body and a soul. Even the body of a Jew is also connected one with God. We just have to reveal it. <laughs> Kamuvan, like it said, right? Like the America was there, but in order to start, you know, uh, how do you say, you, you, the riches of America, you had to you had to discover the place. Ukamuvan, like it's understood from the Pesachtin, from the how do you say, the, the legal decision that the Ramban said, that the ultimate reward, and therefore, what does it mean? The reward, the ultimate completion of everything is only when the souls come into the bodies. There's different opinions about what exactly the raising of the dead is. According to some opinions, the raising of the dead is just one stage before all this, the, the, and everyone is judged, and then the souls go up to heaven. This is basically the opinion of the Maimonides. But the Ramban and all of the Kabbalists and also Arizal and Chabad, they all agree that the the ultimate completion of the world is souls in bodies, the raising of the dead, and not souls without bodies, like the Rambam says, like he says, the Maimonides says. <clears> the <throat> Adarab, and exactly the Asid Love in the future, the soul will be provided for by the body. The body will be higher than the soul because the body did all the commandments. So now we can understand why Moshe spoke. Let's see where this goes up to. No, okay, we'll have to do this tomorrow. We'll have to do this tomorrow. There's a lot to go, huh? A lot to go, but we'll we'll see what we can do. Come on, we'll, we'll do we'll, we'll do our best. Can't do any more than our best. You know, we will. We'll do better than our best. Here we go. This thing is is really weird. It changes the face. I don't know if I should buy a new camera. Or maybe this is interesting, huh? Sort of makes it interesting. Oh, there we go. <clears> that this makes. <clears throat> oh, what did I do? What did I do? Oh. Oh, 
Oh, here, here, here. Okay. Like it's understood from the, this, that th that's what the Rambam says, the Ramban says. So now we can understand what Moshe said, the paro, like also you will give us Zavachim Olos. Moses said, not only are we going to go out to make sacrifices, but you're going to help us make sacrifices. Moses said the Jewish people, they want to go out and make sacrifices out in the desert. You have to go, we want to go out. That's what he told Paro. It wasn't really true. And he said, and you're also going to give us sacrifices. You're going to help us out. Why? We'll talk about this, God willing, tomorrow. And now we're going to do the Yom Yom. We didn't do yesterday's. I didn't do it yesterday. So we will do it today. Here we go. One minute. Oh, no. oh here we go.